Welcome everyone at last to season 5 of Ship Faced, Aquitania. This week I'd like to feature one of my personal favorite maritime authors, Mark Kernside. Thank you so much for the honor of joining us today. Named after the Roman province in France, Aquitania was built by John Brown and Company in Clydebank, Scotland and launched April 21st, 1913. With the success almost immediately with Olympic and her even more luxuriously planned sister Britannic in the pipeline, Kennard needed a strategy. Here to tell us more about that story is famed maritime author Mark Kernside. But, you know, Aquitania is sort of Cunard's response. Um, and, you know, it's just remarkable, really, how they come to such a, um, you know, such a similar conclusion to White Star, basically. Right. Um, you know, because I, I don't think it's widely known that Cunard had, um, you know, state support from the British government for uh, Lusitania and Mauritania. Absolutely. Um, and, you know, there's a, there's a financial historian of, of um, Cunard, um, uh, Francis Hyde, um, uh, I think it was. And he basically said, well, if the government hadn't stepped in, hadn't supported um, Cunard, then arguably they'd have gone bankrupt. Um, you know, because White Star at that point was so much stronger as a company and so much more profitable than Cunard. And, you know, they were the upstart, really. That's right. And so, they, it, it's, you know, the turn of the century, it's come to this position. And it, it's hard to appreciate maybe today because, of course, we all know, um, you know, Cunard was the, 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 the bigger partner, the senior part. Um, but it really transformed, in many ways, Cunard's prospects for, um, you know, having Lusitania and Mauritania, and they, they just were running so well in the pre-war years, and, you know, they were taking the cream of the Liverpool traffic, and then um, they're in a position where White Star has responded, you've got Olympic and, of course, Titanic's on the way, but we won't go there. <laughs> and, <laughs> right. Neither did yeah. she. <laughs> oh no, no exactly. <laughs> and, um, yeah, and uh, you know, Cunard is saying, "Well, you know, we, we need to respond." And um, the situation they were in was that actually they were a bit stronger financially, and they had to they had to finance this new ship themselves. And they really came to the conclusion, actually. Um, I mean, she, she did grow a bit compared to, you know, earlier proposals, but you end up with pretty much the same, you know, the same sort of ship as uh, as White Star. I mean, Aquitaine, yeah, she's a bit longer, but they're both around 900 feet overall. Um, you look at the gross tonnage, you know, 45,000 tonnes. It's so, it's so similar. That's right, um, very similar. Yeah, sorry, you were gonna. Oh, that's okay. I was just gonna say I remember as a, as a a younger kid um, reading your book on Aquitania actually, um, and looking at pictures and and thinking the same thing that you know there's a couple design differences of course between White Star and Cunard, but predominantly the silhouette is very similar to the Olympic liners. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You've got this famous four stacker um, mm -hmm. profile. And of course, Aquitania appears in A Night to Remember, um, you know, because they, well, I think Lusitania does as well, or was yeah. it more, I think it was Lusitania, because, you know, they've got the old footage, and I guess it's kind of basis, well, no one will notice the difference. But I think the Aquitania footage was better, because you sort of see it from a distance, so more yeah. of a distance, so it's less obvious. Um, but yeah, she, she was used to stand in, and, you know, she's been called... I think it was John Max Tone Graham said she was Cunard's White Star liner. Um, and of course, Olympic was uh, was a bit faster than uh, what she was designed for. She was well over 21 knots, so they're a bit closer in speed than, than you might think. Um, and, you know, there are so many uh, sort of crossovers between um, Aquitania's history and, uh, and Olympics. Um, 
you know, Cunard were very keen to do um, whatever they could to kind of learn, you know, lessons from Olympic. Um, and as I, you know, as I've mentioned, the, the, their naval architect, Leonard Peskett, took a, a, a voyage on Olympic in the summer of 1911, um, eastbound. Okay. And I think Cunard's chairman, um, this was George Behe's research, uh, Cunard's chairman was going to sail on Titanic's return voyage in April 1912 to check out Titanic. So, of course, oh, wow. that, that <laughs> never happened. Um, but yeah, Peskett was on Olympic, and of course, um, he, uh, it, we often say he was spying on the competition. It's not really a spy in the sense, you know, he wasn't hiding who he was or anything, but it gives a chance to copy, um, you know, what White Star were doing, or, or maybe kind of say, you know, we, we want to do this, or we don't want to do that. And he came up with quite a long list of things that they they thought well, we'll consider this for for Aquitania. So and just mundane things. I mean, he was quite impressed with Olympics um, emergency uh, generators, and he said, well, actually, the the design intention at that point for Aquitania was I think they chose them. I'm not sure where they were, but they were definitely going to be lower. And he said, well, maybe we should have the emergency dynamos higher up, like on Olympic, so that, you know, if there is flooding, then, you know, you've got the emergency power supply further up, which is, you know, a, a good idea. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us for the first episode in the Aquitania season. And stay tuned to next weekend for the continuation. Don't forget to check out the Etsy shop, The Roller 3D, for some awesome ship models. Like and subscribe to my channel and tune in next week.